Hello everyone and welcome back to the AMP Software YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be taking you through the latest release of AMP 5. In this update, I'll be taking you through some of the main changes we've made with some of the existing features in AMP 5 and also introducing some new features that have been introduced with this release. Two of the main features that we're releasing in this update revolve around something called frame hashing. So I want to start off the video by explaining what frame hashing is so that you can better understand the tools that we're integrating. You may already be aware of file hashing. This is where we hash a full file and produce a hexadecimal number from an algorithm that allows us to give that file a unique fingerprint. Frame hashing works in a very similar way, except this time we're talking about individual frames within a file or individual images. When we're talking about frame hashing, what we're doing is we're taking the pixels within that frame as they are, running them through a hashing algorithm to produce a hexadecimal number that is unique to that frame. This is a great tool that allows us to do multiple different things, which I'm going to take you through now. So the first thing with frame hashing, if I was to export a image from this video, let's say I'm on frame one, two, one now, and I can see my frame hash just here under my tools inspector. If I wanted to export an image and verify that that image was a lossless uh, image, then I can do that quite simply. So if I write this image out as a bitmap, you'll see that there's going to be no changes to that hash during that process. If I were, however, to export this frame into an image and give it some compression through JPEG, you'll see that we're going to get a different hash for that frame now, because during that export, the image is being compressed and that's giving us different values for these pixels when it's been running through the frame hash algorithm. The same principle applies when we're converting video. So we can also validate the different methods we use of converting video. For example, if I convert this particular video and I copy stream this into an AVI, the principle with copy streaming is that I'm taking the video stream out of one container and placing it into a new container and not changing any data within the actual video stream during this process. And again, using the frame hashing, we can validate this process. So here I've now got my new video, which is stream copied. I can go to that same frame, which is one, two, one. And we can see now between both of these videos, the hashes match. So I validated that that stream copy is a forensic copy of the video stream. And with that same principle, I can validate that my transcode of a video is also lossless. So if I convert this video and transcode it this time, but change it into an uncompressed RGB, into an MKV, this is going to be a lossless codec. So we should get the same frame hash as before. So I can go to this video, go to that same frame, one, two, one, and you'll see that they match. Okay, so now that we've gone through what frame hashing actually is, I would like to introduce our first new feature to the update, which is frame hashing. This is going to be run through our advanced file information. And if we go over to the frame hash, you'll see that now we can start analysis of all the frame hashes within this video stream. Because it's running through advanced file info, the video doesn't need to be loaded into five to be able to do this. So you can do it before converting, for example. And you'll see that we've got these settings at the top. These will automatically go to the same settings as your video loader. All we need to do is quick start analysis and you'll see that we'll get a frame hash for every individual frame within this video. Another useful thing we can do with frame hashing 
is to identify if there are duplicates within a video. So to demonstrate this, let's take a look at this capture that I did. So this is a screen capture of a video. So because of the way I set up the frames per second and the duration at the start between starting the screen capturing and actually playing the video, I'm expecting to find quite a few duplicates within this video. So if I go back to my advanced fire info, go to my frame hash and run the analysis, this time we should see that there's going to be quite a few duplicates coming to play. So now that the analysis has finished, we can take a look at the duplicates that we've received. So you can see that at the start of this video, we're getting 43 duplicates of our first frame. This is indicating that there's been no change between each of these frames. There's no change in the pixel values throughout all of these frames. And this is because this is where the video I started recording the screen capture and the video wasn't playing. So there was no movement going on behind the scenes. And because I was capturing in a lossless format, these frames were then duplicated. There was no change in them. So we've got all these duplicate frames. And if we go further down, you'll see where we begin to get duplicates, where the frames per second of the capture was a little bit higher than the frames per second of the video playing. And so that was producing some duplicates as well. With any of these duplicates, we can go to the frame. So if I right click on this one, I can go to frame and I can visually see that frame and I can go between them and visually see that there's no difference. One more thing that's to worth noting here is the total duplicates. So we add up all the duplicate files, uh, all the duplicate frames for you just here. So you can see there was 237 duplicate frames and the video in total had 1058 frames. So we're going to remember that for when we go into the next thing that I'd like to introduce. So the next feature I'd like to introduce is also working off the frame hashing and this is the remove duplicates filter. So if we go to select frames and go to remove duplicates, you'll see that there's a new added uh, tick box to this filter which is automatic selection based on MD5 pixel hash. So now when you're removing duplicates from frames you can rely on those frame hashes that I showed you to remove the frames themselves. So I can just select this and click apply and 5 now will go through all those frames that we hashed again finding those duplicates and automatically removing them for me. So now it's automatically removed those duplicates for us. And if we remember before, we had a total of 1,058 frames. There were 237 duplicates. So I'm expecting to see 821 frames. And you can see after the removed duplicates, we're now down to 821 frames. So those frames that we identified as duplicates in the frame hash in our advanced file info has now been removed using the remove duplicates through that same process. There's going to be a quick way to remove those duplicates when you're looking at video in the future. So now that I've taken you through the new main features that are going to be within five in this update, I'd like to take you through a few other updates that are coming as well to some existing features. The first one's within the history panel. Now we can go and right click any loader and you'll see that there's a new option here for you to take you straight to the advanced fire info. So I can simply right click, select advanced fire info and it will open the advanced fire information for that file for me. The next new update I'm going to show you is to our reporting feature. Now when you go to generate a report, you'll see that we've added a new selection which is to add files, hash and info to the report. So this will take all of your loaders that you've got in your current project. It will give a basic file information and a MD5 file hash to the report. So if I click OK, 
and generate the report, you'll see now in this input file details, we get all that information listed. So you've got a bit of a file summary and you can see the MD5 hash code for each of the input files. And this will now be placed at the top of your report. The next new feature update I'd like to mention is within our filters panel. And this is within the search. Now when you search for a filter, let's say Furrier, you'll see that it will now tell you what category this filter belongs to. This is a request that was made by users just to help users to identify and remember what category each filter belongs to. But now you'll get the category as well as the filter you're looking for. Finally, the last change I would like to introduce is an update to the Macrobox filter that we brought to you in the last update of AMP5. So if I go to verify Macrobox, in its initial release, we have this legend tab, but it graphically wasn't very helpful to the users. We took this feedback on and we've improved this legend quite considerably. So now you'll get a full information of what each macro box means within your video, as well as the quantization parameter information here. And that concludes this update video for AMP5. If you'd like to get some more information about this update, don't forget to check out the AMP software blog where there'll be an update blog post, which will go into much more detail about all the new features and changes within this update. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date with everything that's going on at Ant. Until next time, take care.